ಅಥ ಸ್ವರ ಶಿಕ್ಷಾ ಪ್ರಥಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಪ್ರಣಮ್ಯ ವೇದ ಪುರುಷ ವಕ್ಷಿ ಸ್ವರ ಸಂಗ್ರಹ ಉದಾತ್ತಾನುದಾತ್ತರಿತ ಪ್ರಚಯ ಸ್ವರ ಅಂತಿಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಹಸ್ತೇನ ವೇದ ಯೋಧೀತೆ ಸ್ವರವರ್ಣಾರ್ಥ ಸಂಯುತ ಋಗ್ಯಜುಸ್ಸಾಮಿಪೂತೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಲೋಕೆ ಮಹೀಯತೆ Shiksha means to unfold. Swara, Marshi says, is the reverberation, ra, of the self, swa. He says, when you study the sounds of the mantras and you study the gaps between sounds, then you understand that the reverberations of these sounds, they are the speech of the self. It is the atma that reverberates. It is called swara. It is called the reverberations of atma. It is called the reverberations of the self. So Vedic reverberations of the self, they are always at the basis of the evolutionary impulse of activity, always evolutionary. So shiksha is unfolding all the knowledge about the swaras, all the knowledge about the reverberations of the self. This meaning of swara comprises the totality of speech. Another meaning of swara is pitch accent. There are three pitch accents, udata, anudata, and swarita, meaning raised pitch, not raised pitch, and sliding tone. According to Swara Shiksha, there is a fourth called Prachaya, which is a form of Anudata. The accents are used in the pronunciation of the four Vedas. Here at MUM, we follow Maharishi's guidelines and we do not recite the accented texts like the four Vedas. These recitations, Maharishi explains, are better left to the twice-born, the Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, and Vaishyas of India, who have the long family traditions and the upbringing and schooling to facilitate perfect pronunciation of these accents. Interestingly, Swara Shiksha agrees with Maharishi and says that only the twice-born Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, and Vaishyas are entitled to pronounce these accents. ಅಗ್ನಿಲೆ ಪುರೋಹಿತೈಯಸೃತ್ಯಜ ಹೋತಾರಂಗ್ರತ್ನಾತಮ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ವರ ಇಸ್ ವಾವಲ್ ಸ್ವರ ಶಿಕ್ಷಾ ಡಸಂಟ್ ಗಿವ್ ಅ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ಯಾಟಿಕ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ವಾವಲ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಡಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ A, E, U, A, and O in the context of discussing pitch accents. One interesting feature of this text, which was also displayed by the Vararuchi Shiksha, which we discussed last month, is what is called horizontal integration of knowledge. Horizontal means connection with other texts, especially other Shiksha texts. In an amazing display of scholarship, The author of the Shiksha has shared verses with 23 other Shiksha texts, including texts associated with all four Vedas. There are shared verses with the Shaishariya and Vyali Shiksha of Rigved, the Naradiya Shiksha of Samaved, the Manduki Shiksha of Atarvaved, Yagyavalkya Shiksha, among others, from Shukla Yajurved, and Charayaniya, and Sarvasamata Shiksha, and many others from Krishna Yajurved. In all, about 38 lines 
more than half of the total are borrowed from other works or have been borrowed by these other works from Swatashiksha. This sharing of verses seems to be the norm for many, if not all, of the Shiksha texts and constitutes the horizontal integration of knowledge in the text. There are a number of very intriguing words and phrases that occur in this short text. In the initial invocatory verse of the Shiksha, it says, Pranamya Veda Purusham. Purusha is the 25th category in Sankhya, the third system of Indian philosophy, and refers to the unbounded cosmic witness, the pure self or Atma, the cosmic self, the reality that lies beyond the individual ego and is considered separate and distinct from the 24 other categories which comprise what is called Prakriti or nature. The author of Swarashiksha pays obeisance to absolute silence before embarking on a discourse on the dynamism of the self, on the infinite reverberations of the Atma. In verse 10, there is a phrase that we've heard Maharshi discuss. It's so interesting that this would occur in a Shiksha text. And, of course, this is the only Shiksha text that uses this phrase, and the phrase is Shabda Brahm. Shabda Brahm, the totality, infinite, unbounded totality expressed in sound, expressed in speech, the infinite dynamism of Ved. There is one shiksha which has a diametrically opposed topic of concern from that which forms the subject matter of swara shiksha, and that is shamana shiksha. Shamanas are the places where an initial awe has been elided due to sandhi. Thus, the shamana shiksha is taking the attention to points where there is no expressed speech, where there is no dynamism, only silence. Shamana Shiksha teaches the pronunciation of silence. The Shamana Shiksha is correlated in Rajaram's book with the ciliary ganglion located at the back part of the orbit of the eye. It is the uppermost of all the autonomic ganglia, since in contrast to Shamana Shiksha, the Swara Shiksha teaches the total value of dynamism the complete range of dynamism of the self, the complete knowledge of the ra, or reverberation of the self, swa. Swara shiksha should be correlated with the nethermost of all the ganglia, the terminal ganglion, located near the base of the spine, connecting the two cords of ganglia that proceed upwards along the spine. Our proposal is that the swara shiksha is correlated with the unpaired coccygeal ganglion. From this unique perspective in the gap, in the middle point between the two streams of autonomic ganglia, this one ganglion and this one shiksha have the unique perspective of being able to comprehend the wholeness of speech, the wholeness of expression. Indeed, this text may be a master key shiksha having one verse synthesizing and expounding on the significance of each of the 35 other shiksha texts representing the other 35 pairs of autonomic ganglia. Hence, 35 verses, the number of verses in Swara Shiksha. This is really the first glimmer of hope that we've come across that the field of shiksha may already be a coherent and well-defined whole. This shiksha may represent a fundamental discovery in the structure of knowledge in the field of shiksha. In conclusion, the swara shiksha has come, to, come down to us in a very pure and complete state. It is a mainstream shiksha, rich in the traditions of knowledge of the ancient shikshakaras, profound 
in its horizontal integration of knowledge, that means in its connection with other shiksha texts, and also in its vertical integration of knowledge, expressing its own unique angle of cognition of the reality of Vedic speech. And it demonstrates an extraordinary emphasis on consciousness as the basis for perfect pronunciation of the Vedic texts. For these reasons, we believe Swata Shiksha deserves to be evaluated as an authentic and original exposition of the knowledge of Vedic phonology, having an equal rank with the phonetic works of Panini, Katyayana, Vararuchi, Bharadwaja, and other great sages of antiquity.